Okay, so welcome back and uh, we were stopping at the median filter in the previous lecture. So we discussed a lot on the smoothing or the averaging filter and its significance, right? Uh, and we also derived that average uh, filter or the averaging operation sort of gives you the minimum square error uh, if you want to replace a particular pixel uh, in accordance with its neighbors, right? So that's what we derived last time. And that's a very important, uh, uh, I mean, concept, right? Now, um, this is another interesting concept. Uh, this is median filter, okay? So uh, I'm sure you might have done median in many uh, examples in statistics, for example. And But here, there is a beautiful application. There's something known as median filter. So I'll explain how it works, actually, okay? So for that, I would like to illustrate it using, using a very simple example. So this is a circuit board, and this is an X-ray image uh, of the circuit board. So as I think we discussed this some time back in the first lecture, that uh, we take the X-ray of the X-ray image of the PCB and check for any faults. But many cases, what happens is actually, this is a real scenario, is uh, the image gets added with a type of noise known as salt and pepper noise. So what is salt and pepper noise? Salt and pepper noise is something which has only zero and a gray level value, let's say. So it has only black and white uh, values and it will just perturb the entire system. So if you take the histogram, you will see it significantly dominated at uh, two particular values, okay? So instead of having a smooth histogram or a uh, Gaussian distribution histogram, okay? So in such a scenario, if I do a Gaussian filtering, okay, so you may able to get, I mean, you may be able to remove the noise to an extent, but the problem we already know with Gaussian filtering is like it will smooth the image also, right? It will smooth the edges. So your edges will get lost and it's really not uh, very convincing. This result is not very, very convincing. But if I apply a median filter, okay, so we'll explain what is a median filter uh, soon. So if I apply a median filter, you look at the difference. Okay, so you look at the difference here. So it's it's absolutely, it's interesting. So it's interesting, right? In the sense like uh, the noise is completely gone and you get a very, very, very interesting result. And what is the median filter, okay? So let me just explain to you within, I mean, using a very good example in the sense like uh, some numbers, okay? So how does the median filter works, okay? So let's say, 1D is very easy for me to explain, so I'll just use a 1D example, okay? So let's hi let's say how uh, 2, 7, 3, 5, 5, 4, 7, okay? So this is the input uh, that I have, and I'm going to apply a median filter in this uh, particular thing, and let's say the median filter has a kernel size of 3, okay? So in this case, uh, not 3 by 3, 3 because it's a 1D. So that means groups of 3 I'm going to take. So let's say median filter is applied. So let me just put output here. So these three will be considered, okay? So what does the median filter does is, it just orders, okay? So orders the thing in the ascending or the descending order. So let's say in this case, it will be two, three, seven, and then put the sender value out, okay? So basically these three, if I'm considering, okay? So let me put it here, okay? So this is because the center value, so I'll just replace it by 3, okay? And now, let's say I'm going to consider this guy, 7, 3, 5. So that means 3, 5, 7, and this will be 5, right? Because 3, 5, 7, middle value is 5, I'll put it here. And then similarly, 3, 5, 5. So that is, itself is 3, 5, 5, so no change. So 5 will come again here. And then this 3, okay? So 5, 5, 4, which means 4, 5, 5, but again 5 is here, okay? And then let's say 7, 4, 5, which will be 4, 5, 7, so this will be 5, and so on. So you can actually assume 0 here and put this also. Let's say 0, 2, 7, this will be 2 here, no problem. And this will be 4, 7, 0, which will be uh, put as 0, 4, 7, so this will be 4. Okay, so I hope uh, this is correct. Okay, so I hope you understood what exactly is median filter doing, and you have to imagine this is happening in 3D. Sorry, in a, not 3D, 2D, 3 by 3 kernel, right? So we'll have a 3 by 3 kernel. You sort all the values in ascending or descending order, pick the sender value, put it in the pixel, okay? In that particular pixel. Similar to the normal convolution operation, but the only problem here is the non-linearity associated with it because it is purely based on the data. So this is not like a linear operator. It's a non-linear operator, right? The data values 
uh, changes, the result will change. So it's really not a linear operation. Okay, so that's very important to understand that. And uh, uh, it's and one of the interesting fact about median. Okay, so that I I would like to actually put it. You can actually derive for yourself. It's not that easy. Okay, so if somebody is very keen in calculus, I encourage you to actually derive this. So previously, what we saw is like the the operation which minimizes the mean square error between a pixel and its neighbors, right, is the mean operation. Now, I have a challenge here. Let's say instead of squared error, let me just put uh, this way. Okay, so, okay, let me put this is absolute. Okay, so A, C minus AI. Okay, so I again ranges from 1 is to 9. Let's take a 3 by 3. Okay, so this is absolute error. Okay, not squared error. Okay. And then you can even how mean if you want, okay. And then this is mean absolute error, okay. So the one, what is that uh, which minimizes this, okay. So if you see, this will turn out to be AC is equal to median of A. okay. The reason why, I'm, maybe I'll intuitively tell you why, because uh, what median does is it orders everything in aso uh, ascending or descending, right? So then it means your middle value has to have equal number of, I mean, the middle value should be sort of, uh, uh, I mean, basically, if you want, okay, let's put this way. We want to reduce absolute error, okay? So the absolute error will reduce only if you have equal number of positives and negatives. That means AC minus AI, if AC is greater than AI and AC is less than AI, that number should be exactly equal. Then only the absolute error reduces to zero or minimum. And that mostly or that may be uniquely satisfied when median is applied. Okay, So that could be one reason. I mean, intuitively you want to, but there is definitely official uh, derivation. You can try it out and uh, get back to this result. But very interesting to see that. So if you want to reduce absolute error, median is your friend. And if you want to uh, reduce the uh, squared error, it will be mean, okay? So all the time. And now, what is the advantage and what is the disadvantage of median? So median is a nonlinear filter. So that is one disadvantage because you don't have control on how the entire system behaves, okay? But the advantage is very, very important, okay? So let's take an example, okay? So I'll just take an example. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 10, Okay, five. So if you take the mean of this, okay, so this is A. So mean of A and median of A. Okay, so mean of A is basically all these numbers summed up, right? Divided by uh, basically uh, how many of them? Six of them. And then median is easy to find out, right? Median, what is median and mean here? So let's, okay. So this will come somewhere around, uh, let me just quickly check it. Okay, so it will come somewhere around 3.5. Okay, so this guy will come somewhere around 3.5, and this guy will come somewhere around 4.2. And see here, so this is because you have an even number here, right? 1, 2, this is 6, right? So you have to arrange it in order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 10. Okay, and you have to take the center one, which is somewhere between 3 and 4, and that is why 3.5 comes into the picture. And mean, you already know, it is plain simply adding it up, dividing by 6, and that will come to 4.2. Now, here you won't notice much of a big change. Now, let's make this as 100. Okay, so if I make it as 100, the mean value will change to 19.2, and the median will not change. Okay, so that is the beauty. Now, I hope you understood already what is the significance of median filter and mean filter. So mean filter is heavily biased towards the large value. Okay, so if there is a spurious peak, for example, or a spurious value in your image, your mean filter will miserably fail. It will create a lot of issues, a lot of artifacts. Whereas median is robust to something like a spurious uh, fit. So median filter, obviously, as we saw here, the salt and pepper noise, which is like extremely high values concentrated at uh, two intensities, you are able to completely remove it uh, using median filter explicitly because of this reason. Okay. So the reason is it is immune to spurious because you are sorting it out and taking the center point, right, center value. So then you are extremely robust to the spurious values. And mean, on the other hand, is very sensitive to spurious value. Okay. So... 
uh, that's very very interesting and uh, this actually i mean now i just giving a hint to you and this is actually related to whether you go for mean square error or mean absolute error okay so if you go for mean square error you are very much uh, sort of altered by an extremely high value in the image on the other hand mean absolute error is still robust to that extremely high value so i'm just giving some clues okay so expand your thought around that so the point i wanted to convey is uh, very clear now i hope that uh, median filter very sensitive to i mean very less sensitive to spurious peak mean filter is very sensitive to spurious peak okay so that's very important uh, to note let me just discard this now i have a trivia for you here okay so median filter is also known as the 50th percentile filter you already know the reason you are sorting the data taking the 50th value or the centered value so the 50 percentage value right so that is why it is called the 50th percentile filter okay now what is 0th percentile or 100th percentile filter just think about it you have that in the quiz coming so what is 0th percentile filter what is 100th percentile filter okay so you can do this okay we will never explain this but it will be very very important so i will have a question around the same the 0th percentile and the 100th percentile filter what is it just think about it okay median is the 50th percentile filter okay so let's move on so we studied about smoothing averaging gaussian filters uh, median filters median filter is a non linear filter very robust uh, very less sensitive to spurious peaks so that's why very good result for salt and pepper noise now let's move on okay now if we studied about smoothing we should study about sharpening also that means if smoothing is a low pass filtering or it can be achieved by using averaging or summation sharpening should be achieved by differentiation right that should be very clear by now we already had example of adding across images right multiple images subtracting across images so we already saw that addition will smooth the image subtraction will enhance the edges so now let's actually do it in a very very systematic way okay so what is differencing here so differencing here is basically you are subtracting between pixels okay so it can be along the x direction or along the y direction so that's what you are going to do so let's take in a very classical calculus way okay so first derivative right that is differencing for you okay so do f by do x that means your intensity you are actually trying to see across the x direction so that's exactly this in terms of uh, digital implementation it is this expression is simple it is nothing but f of x plus 1 minus f of x okay so basically differentiation also i mean if you are very particular you just put y value here okay so that means it is partial differentiation it is only going to affect in the x direction if you're very particular you can actually put it this and you may also argue that why don't we put this way x my y minus f of x minus 1 y it is fine you can do that also it doesn't matter okay so you can take any of these definitions okay so let's consider this so what is second derivative okay so that is also important right because you can take another derivative of this so do square f by do x square it is as simple as you actually going one more level in this particular case right f of x plus if you put so if you basically put f of x plus 1 minus f of x if you go another differentiation you end up in having f of x plus 1 plus f of x minus 1 minus 2 f of x please note this let's derive actually if maybe if you are confused so let's actually do this way do square f by do x square is nothing but do by do x okay of do f by do x okay so use this okay so that is this one so you just do that again so i go f of x plus 2 minus f of x plus 1 okay for this one and then for this one minus of okay f of x plus 1 minus f of x okay so if i expand it it will become f of x plus 2 minus 2 f of x plus 1 minus sorry plus f of x correct these two are exactly same <laughs> you might be wondering just see okay it doesn't matter where i start right if just reduce everything by one value okay the x value the x index if you reduce everything by one value this is exactly same as f of x plus 1 minus 2 into f of x okay plus f of x minus 1 that is what exactly written here okay so i hope it's very clear okay so the, uh, this is what happens and uh, now please always think that 
this is actually with respect to x you can have with respect to y also because image is a 2d matrix it has x and y direction we have show we are showing here only the x direction you have automatically the y direction also okay so always consider that okay so now what is better ah okay so this is an interesting question so we are our target is actually to sharpen the image enhance the edges in the image so shall i go for first derivative or shall i go for second derivative because both are subtraction i am sure both will enhance the edges but what is better let's do it in with an example okay so one the example again so you have intensity on the y axis and some x direction okay so x samples on the uh, x axis and these are the values so let me just put that okay or maybe not so this is a constant region then you have a ramp decrease again another constant region a sudden step and a constant region so values are here so ignore the first and second derivative for a moment so you have 6666 constant region 54321 ramp 11111 is all constant region sudden jump over here okay so this is a step this this guy okay is here and then 666 okay and now just do the uh, basic operation the first derivative which is basically as we we discussed in the last slide right so let's say this this particular value so what is it it actually 6 minus 6 which is 0 okay so now this one is 6 minus 6 is 0 okay ah okay i think this these guys are going the other way okay so because 5 minus 6 is put here okay so that means 6 minus 6 is here 6 minus 6 is here so this is one step ahead i think yeah it goes back to this formula right f of x plus 1 okay so that's what it is so this particular index 6 minus 6 is equal to okay 6 minus 6 is equal to 0 okay so that's a uh, thing here so this minus this is 0 6 minus 6 is 0 5 minus 6 is minus 1 4 minus 5 is minus 1 3 minus 4 is minus 1 2 minus 3 is minus 1 1 minus 2 is minus 1 1 minus 1 is 0 and so on okay so you have the first derivative second derivative if i go back by the same formula so one more derivative on this guy so 0 minus 0 is 0 minus 1 ah oh, okay i think in this case is starting from the other way right okay let's see yeah it's correct oh, sorry sorry i think it missed it so 0 minus 0 0 -1 -0 it's -1 -1 minus -1 minus min oh, no no there's some problem here Ah, sorry for the confusion. I think it's correct. So zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus one is minus one. Minus one minus minus one is zero, right? Minus one minus minus one is minus one plus one. So and so on. So you get basically this expression. Now, if I won't really see any difference by looking at these numbers, but suppose I plot it. Okay. So I'm going to plot these uh, things here. Okay. So if I plot it, so you can see over here this this guy. The uh, dot is basically the first derivative so this guy okay so this particular thing is plotted as this dot okay so that's what you are seeing and similarly the other one is basically the uh, second derivative now you see now you can actually see what is the uh, the important observations that you want to make so whenever there is a change okay so from the constant region even to the ramp whenever there is a change the second derivative is highlighting it very nicely you see all this okay Okay, so whenever there is a change, even including the direction also, the second derivative is really giving you a better picture. Okay, so edges are be definitely highlighted better in the second derivative. So from the above result, it appears like second derivative, the fine detail, much better than the first derivative, and ideally suited for image sharpening. Okay, so let's play with that. Okay, second derivative. Okay, so I'll stop this lecture now. and we will uh, come back and uh, discuss on the second derivative okay for sharpening purpose